All right, well, All first, right, thing, first we're thing, we're back. It's good to see some faces around the building now. Guys had a few days off, uh, which was good. Well earned and deserved from their summer workouts. Uh, proud of our strength staff. They did a tremendous job this summer with the team and just having them prepared and ready each and every week. And when we got a chance to get back with those guys in July as a staff. It was good to see the progress they made. So we're looking forward to seeing that as we get into practices. Uh, team meeting tonight, get everybody back together and uh, set the stage for tomorrow. And then we get to go out there, get the helmets on and, and get ourselves ready uh, through these 25 practices that we get and start preparing for the season. So everybody here, it's a good vibe. Uh, we're all looking forward to just getting back out there on the field and getting back to practicing and, and preparing for the season. And uh, that's been the focus. So with that, open up for questions. Coach, first, Coach, first question questions from Jason, from Jason Caldwell. Ryan, for you, if you guys, you've talked about competition a lot, but I guess I mean, everybody kind of focuses on quarterback, but you, you said, hey, every, everything's open, everything's a competition. How important is that going into really your first camp, but any camp to go, hey, everybody's got to battle and prove it? Well, well especially now, and, you know, there, there's not a three, four year history that we've had with players on this team. And I think every year you get spring practice, you get an idea of where your team's at. And you get to give them, you know, two to three things to work on uh, going into the summer. So they get a little break and they go into the summertime. They're going to be working on those things. They're focused on new goals and expectations that they have for themselves going into that next season. Then they get the entire summer to work out, train, uh, to go through about 17, 18 practices that they run. And then we get them back in fall camp. So there's just there's so much growth and development that happens from when spring ends to when you start fall camp. And so we get guys out there. you got to let guys compete. I mean, there would be nothing more frustrating, in my opinion, to know that you have no shot um, coming into fall to go compete for a position. Every guy here wants to play. Every guy on this team wants to be on the field. Every guy wants to contribute. And so they're going to get their opportunities to do that. they got to make it count. And then eventually the guys that do better, they're going to get more opportunities. And the guys that don't, they're going to get less. And you start working your team into your two deep. And eventually you're going to figure out who's on scout team and what that's going to look like going into the first game. But I think you've got to give guys an opportunity to go out there and compete. And if anything, um, you create that competition in that room. I think it brings out the best in all the players. And at the same time, as a coach, you want to have depth and competition creates that. So now if, if something happens or if a guy deserves to play, you try to find a role for him on the team so that he can contribute. And to me, that's, that's the fun part of having the chance to compete. And ultimately, at the end of uh, fall camp, you have a deadline, September 4th, and we're playing Akron. We get to go compete against Akron. So you want to be building that within your team so when it's time to go out there and play we all understand what that means and you know we get the best players on the field the guys that have earned it deserve it um, and that's really how things should be right you earn it you get your opportunities and and you're the best then you're going to have the chance to go out there and play and be on the field when it's game day next next is tom green Hey, Brian, uh, this kind of happened in the week or so since we last spoke to you, but as someone who's coached at Texas and now is entering your first year in the SEC, just wanted your thoughts on Texas and Oklahoma coming to the league. When are they coming to the league? Uh, a couple of years at least. 2025, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give you my opinion, but I, right now, not my, my biggest concern all right, with Texas and Oklahoma, but I did see that. That is big news, and you know that's something that uh, I think says a lot about the SEC. Is really what it does. And, and you've got two really good programs that uh, have done well for themselves. I was at Texas, so I've got a chance to experience that and and that brand, and then obviously have the chance to, to play Oklahoma and watching them over the years. So I think that says a lot about the conference. Uh, I don't know all the details of it, but. Uh, we're going to welcome them in, and you know we'll uh, certainly be seeing them like we have already in the recruiting trail and, and things like that. But uh, when it's time to go out there and compete against them, uh, I think it's going to make you know the conference, the SEC conference, better. And you know, as a, being a part of it right now um, and knowing that change was 
was going to happen at some point. I mean, I think we all felt that way, and, and this is a part of it. Where it leads from here, who knows? But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's for Greg and, and everybody else making those decisions. But, you know, when it's time, we'll be ready. Next coach is Mark Murphy. Mark, Mark. Can you talk about how much physicality you want to have in the practices before you play your first game and how much best against best type of, of those practices you're going to have? Yeah, well, early on, we scrimmage uh, practice eight, and so really everything leading up to that is good on good. And, and the physicality, you know, you, you want to have that in every practice. And, and as a coach, you've got to balance it. You've got to put your, your players out there where they can practice the techniques. Uh, they can do it properly. They can get better at it. And then there is that component of being physical in there. There are new rules that, that the, the NCAA has come out and said that these drills no longer exist. Uh, there's new rules for helmet, you know, how many helmet practices we're having. So we're able to adjust to that in this camp. And I think for a lot of us, I know I've done it in the past, probably a lot more like the model that the NCAA suggested. So that's not too far off of what I've done. Uh, at the same time, every practice you're maximized. And this is a physical game. And, you know, I think a big part of this game is toughness. And so how you create that, um, how you practice that, and then how you do it in a way where, you know, your guys are able to get to the game and still be fresh and ready to play. So that's really about your team. I think a lot of it goes back to your conditioning in the summer. Where's your team at? How conditioned are they? How fast can we practice? Uh, how focused are we at practice? I think when you have a team that's extremely focused and you're working the techniques, um, that physicality component will be there, but you know it's there because you know they're practicing properly. And if not, you know, you're going to have to get out there and, and work on some of those things live a little bit more. So that's going to be really uh, for us to decide as we go through these first few practices, where are we at? How much of this do we need? And every camp, you know, it's not cookie cutter. You have your plan, but you got to be able to adjust with your team. And, and, and really it comes back to just how your players focus, practice, and do it each day. Next, Next is Brian, Brian Matthews. Uh, yes, sir, Coach Harson. Uh, who will be competing at uh, left tackle and right tackle for you guys uh, during preseason practice? How close will we be watching those two competitions? Yeah, I'll be watching them. Um, who that is right now, I don't know. I mean, I know who it is, but we're going to have we're going to have a lot of guys on the O line crossbreeding. Let me just say that playing some guard, playing some tackle, um, and and letting those guys all compete. You know, as we get out there, Troxel will be out there, Brandon Coffey will be out there, Council will be out there. I mean, we're going to have guys that have played in those positions that will be starting or maybe called the pecking order for practice there. And then we're going to move guys around. And, you know, that's, that's a big part of what we feel like on the O-line is um, going to help us develop is, is getting guys in those positions and not so much solidified at that early. Let them compete, let them move around a little bit, and to decide who those who those five guys are going to be, and you want to get your best five on the field eventually. Next, J J G Tate. Yeah, question about your defensive backfield. You've got so many guys who have been starters who have played a lot. I know that's great for camp to have that much competition, but when we get to the season, do you think there's going to be a lot of rolling and rotating back there more so than we've seen in the past? Yeah, I don't know. I hope so, and I hope I hope there's the opportunity to do that. Let me say that, and. That means, again, that we've got really good players. We're able to, to create competition throughout camp. They're all deserving to play. And then those guys are going to have their roles on defense. That particular, those positions are going to have roles on special teams, which is huge. That'll make a difference in the game. But we got to see some of these, these new guys that have come in as well and just where are they at. Uh, get a chance to get on the field with them, get a chance to work with them. Uh, what, what is their retention? from practice to practice. I think that's one thing that really stands out, and that's an important factor. Because as we get into uh, spring practice, you know, you're able to control that. You can, you can speed it up and slow it down based off your team. In fall camp, early on, you have the chance to do that, and then that deadline is coming. And so things st start to pick up very quickly. And then game week, it is, you know, there's there's no going back. You've got to be able to continue to keep moving forward. And I think a big part for everybody 
you know, when you have that type of competition and those type of players is, all right, who can retain, who can execute, who can do it consistently, all right, throughout that practice and the next day repeat it and come back and, and be able to do that again. That remains to be seen. We got a chance to see some of those returners uh, in spring, but some of the new guys in there as well that have played and have experience, we got to see those guys in camp. Next day, Nathan King. King. Hey, Brian, Bo told us at SEC Media Days that Demetrius Robertson was still finishing up some classes um, to come to finish out at Georgia. Has he been able to report on time and has everyone else on the roster reported today? Yeah, so they have uh, and his situation, uh, he will. So he's right there. No, is he going to be here today? No, but he's he's very close. Let me just say that Bo was exactly right on that, finishing up a few things and and so just from the academic standpoint, just, just kind of making sure that we have everything um, all buttoned up and good to go. So once he gets here, uh, and we anticipate that to be very soon, hopefully tomorrow, and have him out there for practice, if not in the, in the next couple of days. But uh, he's close. He's been working hard. He's staying on top of it. Um, and I appreciate that about him. This is really important to him. Uh, he's an older player. He's mature. So those things, we all feel very good. We just like everybody, want to get him here, want to get him started as fast as possible, and, and we're hoping that tomorrow we get a chance to do that. Next question, Brian Stoltz. Thank you, Kirk. Uh, Coach, with uh, Tank and Sean being the only guys in a running back position that kind of have experience, how important is the development of Jarquez and maybe some others for added depth at that position? Yeah, Jarquez, yeah, Jar Jordan Ingram, those guys that are here right now. And Jarquez has had a really good summer. Uh, he's obviously inexperienced when it comes to being out there at practice. We know that he's a young guy, but he's very strong, tough, works extremely hard. So he's got all the qualities that you want in a player, all right, and certainly at that position. Uh, but Tank and Sean, both those guys, I thought they excelled this summer. I thought both of those guys as leaders on the team really stepped up. Uh, this is important to them. It's good to see two good players uh, really working with each other as well. I mean, they both know they're going to play. They both know that they're going to have impacts on this team. And then, yeah, you got to get somebody, Jordan Jarquez, um, some of the other guys in that running back room that are going to need to step up because you want to have – you know, you always want to have all your guys there, but you know, especially that position, you got to have depth. You got to have guys that can get in there, and and even if it's a specialty role and it's one or two plays, or this is what they do, that still makes a huge difference uh, in the offense. And you know, we'll see. We'll see what the new guys what they're capable of, of learning and retaining, and what they can handle through camp. But I think from what I've seen physically, those guys had a really good summer. They're capable of doing it now. Now we got to go out there and apply it to the field. Jordan Hill. Hey, Brian. We talked back in the spring sort of about you and, and Coach Bobo working together and what the offense would look like. Just what has it been like between the two of you sort of figuring that out these last few months in uh, preparation for the fall? Yeah, a lot of really good conversations just about philosophies. And, yeah, he and I both, we, we, we've done this for a while, and – you know, we both have things that we really like, and they're very similar, but there's – it's not so much about the plays. I think we can all decide, hey, this is a good play. This is what is going to work against a lot of different defenses. It's how do you teach it, right? What's, what's the progression that you're teaching that particular play? What are the details of it? To me, that's where not just Bobo and I, but the entire staff, because everybody's in there. Right, all of us are smarter than any one of us. So you just sit in there and and let people ask questions like, "Why'd you do it like this? Why? Where did you learn this from? You know, what about this?" And that takes time, but it also gets everybody in that room as you're developing something new. And and that's exactly what we're doing. We're developing something new. We're taking a blend of things and putting it together to create the Auburn offense. And, and everybody knows that. So. What does that look like? We've identified that. What does that mean to our players? We've identified that. Now, how do we go out there and teach this? And we've identified that, but that's really the part where you sit in those rooms and you go through film and you talk about if it's going to be a depth or steps or whatever it might be for the wide receivers. And Coach Williams is in there, you know, sitting there asking the same questions. You know, how are we going to do this? 
to me, that's the fun part. That's the that's the part of, of getting people that have done something a certain way together, and that and everybody just sitting there and and say what they think, and then go back and, and take all those ideas and come together, uh, and have one one direction, uh, and be able to go in those meeting rooms and teach it that way. And, and you know, like I said, Mike's Mike's done this. Um, it's been good to work with. Derek's been the same way. So. To me, that's the enjoyable part about having a new staff and just being able to do some things that even some of us didn't do in the past, right? You kind of get set in certain things that you do when you're at a place for a while and you've always wanted to do some things. Well, this gives us a chance to be able to to put some new stuff out there that, that we haven't done, to use some different ideas that we've wanted to do, create that our own way and, and put it out there at practice and see what it looks like. So, Marshall? Marshall? Brian, uh, I guess you've been here going on eight months now. How, how, how much has things been different than you? This is kind of a three-part question. How much have things been been the, like you expected or different than you expected? And two, how do you avoid distractions from all the things going on right now from NIL to, uh, to uh, vaccinations and all those things? And, and three, with the NCAA issuing their vaccination guidelines yesterday, I guess, uh, where do you guys stand with that, and how important is it to to get in a position where you don't have to worry about losing players? Yeah, yeah. You may have you to may ask me those again. I, I'm going back to one. Um, <laughs> just my experience here. Well, you know, that was. I mean, I came into this. I've I've, I've been around really good coaches and have worked for really good coaches in the past. And so I've got a chance to see really, in my opinion, great leadership and, and have a chance to be a part of that. And so, um, and, and I've been different places, not as much as some coaches have, but I've been different places and I've got a chance to experience um, some different cultures and environments and all that. And, and this one, you know, I came into this um, and, and really with an open mind and, and you know, with the thought process of putting together a staff that could help us achieve a goal that we have for ourselves, winning the championship, um, being around great people, and being in a community like uh, Auburn, um, which, you know, that's been the biggest surprise in a good way, just the people here. And, and I say that because, and I've mentioned this before, the families and certainly my family, how we feel about living here, uh, I've appreciated that. And so that means a lot to me more than anything. Um, as far as the environment here in the football facility, we're creating that. You know, it's our environment, so we're creating it every day. This is what we're doing. And the people that came here to be a part of this program know that we have a direction, a plan, and a process that we're going to use to get all that done. Um, the distractions, yeah, it's every day. You know, I, and I think that's the key. It's not just for me. It's for, you know, for you. It's for all of us. We all have distractions. What's the focus? What What is that... What is that mindset that you're trying to create every single day for yourself when you walk in to do your job and do it to the best of your ability? You know, that's really up to you. And what are the, the resources that you're using to help you stay focused on that every single day? Well, you know, the resources are your people. You know, you have people around you and hopefully you're in an environment that they help you with that and they're not causing more distractions. Um, you're able to jump into good books. You're able to, to sit back and, and really just you know, decide hey, these are the important things for you that keep you focused on, on what it is you want to accomplish. And, you know, that's, that's one thing is, as I've done this and, um, you know, been around really good people, uh, really honing in on, you know, what are the most important things? And, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of work. It takes tremendous discipline to do that, to stay focused on the things that matter most. Um, and that's what I try to do. Uh, and if anything, just stay aware when you get off that path, just be aware of it and, and be able to, you know, get right back on. Um, as far as, you know, the, the protocols and different things, obviously we're, we're going to be doing things uh, through camp and, and probably into the season uh, with masks and some other things that, that we've done in the past. So we understand that um, and, and comply and we'll have to continue to make sure that, that we follow those guidelines that we have and so that we can put ourselves in the best position each and every day to be successful. That's that's simple. We, we want to we go out there and succeed. So 
we're going to be able to do those things. Um, we've improved, you know, in our area uh, with this team of, you know, the vaccinations and, and where we are right now. The education continues, and I, and I said that before, and um, that hasn't changed. So um, right now the, the goal is we get started and, and we're going to be prepared for September 4th and that we play and that we have a great experience and, and the guys that are here and, and the people that are a part of this program have a chance to, to go out there and experience all the things um, that Auburn football provides, the Tiger Walk, the game day environment, rolling the trees, all those things that come along with it. I fully expect that. i um, excited to be a part of it, and our team does as well. Bill Cameron. Well, that's a much better job than only multiple part questions, Coach. Uh, you really took advantage of the first year of immediate eligibility with the transfer portal to, to fill some needs. Who of those guys have uh, caught your eye that you're excited about seeing feel can help the team? And, and how big a factor do you think the portal is going to be from this point on? Well, I would say all of them, not to single any one of them out because they're new and, and they've, they've done a really good job this summer. I think all of them, they all came here for a reason. We expect them to play. I said that before. And so every single one of them uh, has caught my eye in different ways. And the one thing about all of them, too, I mean, this is, you know, you're coming here to be a part of this program, but you're coming in here to compete and play. And, and that's one of the things about the transfer portal that uh, I think is uh, very clear when guys leave, you know, there's a reason they want to play and they want to be a part of, you know, maybe something different, whatever that is. Uh, but I think that that's not anything that's going away. That's going to be something that everybody's going to continue to use in the future. And I think the biggest, the biggest key with the transfer portal is, is you're going to find good players. You're going to find really good people. You're going to find um, those players that fill needs for you that can come in and play that are going to see opportunities in your program that are going to want to be there and want to be a part of that. Um, and there's going to be guys too that know who you are that maybe chose somewhere else and, and realized that you were the best fit for them. And so they decide to join your program. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think we have to continue to keep educating these players on there's only so many available spots and you know, you just got to know uh, if you make that decision that you're going to leave somewhere, all right, know what you're getting into. And, and I know that's, that's been something that, um, you know, we've talked about in our conference and, and just something that I, I think as, as college football, we have to keep educating players on, you know, when you make that decision, you know, there's, there's a lot of still unknowns when you put yourself out there. And the goal always is you bring, some, you bring your players in, you spend time developing them, uh, it's hard, it's difficult, uh, it's grueling, all those other things at times, and then it gets better and because you get better and, and you learn how, uh, how things really are and how to operate at a higher level. And so uh, I think we always got to keep that in mind and, and what I would say with players too, keep that in mind because it's those difficult moments are making you better in my opinion. And, and as you work through that, you're going to be in a, in a really good position and you're going to be a better person, better player for all those things. And um, not all the time is it is the answer to go somewhere else. And so I think as we do this more, you know, I think the, the players will understand that and this thing will kind of level out a little bit, but it's, it's not going to go away. We're going to keep using it. Um, we'll use it. Every other team in the country will use it. And then it comes back to just what are the needs? Um, who are you looking for? How do they fit? And, and who's going to be best for your program? And, you know, it'll probably it'll probably hurt a little bit in the high schools and, and maybe the junior colleges if if you're kind of working through some of the players uh, that are already in college. And I think that's just something that we all need to be aware of moving forward. I don't know the impact of it. I just know those are some of the things that that we've discussed that we just got to understand and know that are going to be a part of just college football moving forward. Coach, we got a few more. First, Justin Ferguson. Brian, you said at uh, SEC Media Days that you thought the wide receivers were talented. You just had a lot of work to do with them because of the inexperience. What specifically are you looking for those guys uh, to do in fall camp to feel like you guys are going to be in your best spot uh, week one? Consistency every day. Showing up every day, uh, preparing themselves every day, coming out to practice every day. You know, the wide receivers – for the most part, run more than anybody on the field. They're also on special teams. They do a lot of work. 
Uh, but they got to have their minds right when they step out there and just know like that's part of um, the position that they play. And the details that they take from the meetings, uh, the application on the field, um, and then what they do in the evenings, especially in camp, coming back and reviewing that and studying it. Like, you know, that's a position now. You've got to be a student of the game. And, and so when you watch really good wide receivers, I think one thing that stands out, they're, they're very consistent. Um, they're getting off the ball. They understand their adjustments. Um, they get lined up properly. There's not a lot of issues, you know, from really good wide receivers from that standpoint. Um, and I think, you know, the really, really good ones, they, they understand the game and, and there's just critical moments in the game. It's, it's catching the ball and it's in a two minute drill and running it to the middle of the field. It's getting out of bounds. It's, you know, being able to, to put yourself in a position based off coverage that's going to give us an advantage because you understand it, you paid attention in practice, you saw the looks that, that the defense was giving you, and you picked up on a few cues that, that help you stay ahead of, of what the defense is doing so you can respond properly when the ball snapped. And um, that goes for a lot of positions, but that one in particular is, is extremely important for us and, and what we're trying to accomplish in our offense. And you know those guys every day, they show up, they put in the work, um, and, I, and I meant what I said, we got talented players in there. We got to be consistent every single day. We got to do it um, because we want to. And I think that group's got to you know, get, create that identity um, so that they're that type of unit and, and those type of players that we, that we know we need in our offense. And, and they're capable of doing it. So, you know, to me, that's the key. And from what I saw this summer, uh, you know, a lot of really good work and a lot of those things are happening now. I'm just looking forward to seeing that on the field when we go practice. Last two, uh, first Tom Green and then Mark Murphy. Hey, Brian, I uh, wanted to circle back to something Philip asked a few minutes ago. I know you said the team vaccination rate has improved, but do you have an exact number on where you guys stand entering fall camp? And then will Brandon Council have any sort of limitations to start fall camp after that shoulder and ACL uh, surgery? Um, no, I just, I know we've gotten better. Uh, in the vaccination area and all that, don't have a number for you. Uh, and then as far as counsel goes, he's not limited out there at practice. Uh, I think we, we understand that he hasn't had the amount of practice time that other guys have too. So uh, he's going to go. He's going he's gonna to be able to go out there and cut it loose. And, and we're going to have to do a good job of just allowing him to build into a few things that he hasn't done in a while. Other than that, you know, it's really kind of based off how he feels and how he looks and how he responds um, after each practice, what his recovery time is. Uh, and as far as, you know, he's concerned, like he's ready to go. And so we'll just make sure of that. And then when all that is good, um, he's going to be out there full speed, just like everybody else. Mark? Mark? Yeah, is there a comfort level having guys like Sakobi and Owen back as returning starters at linebacker, guys who can really run, considering you guys are going to face a lot of spread offenses this year, quick offenses? Yeah, absolutely it is. And, I, and I've seen those guys play. I'm, I've obviously worked with them in the spring and then this fall camp. It's going to be good to get back out there and, and have more experience with those guys at that position. But uh, anytime guys have played, and you can go back and review the film, and there's a lot of coaching that happened from last season also. So these guys are better players. They've learned and they've been in this league. They know what to expect. And you're right, you know, the, the way the offenses are, they're spreading it out. They're going to try to get the ball, quick throws and in space. And so when you got guys that can close space and distance real quickly, uh, and those guys can do that, you're going to eliminate uh, the run after catch. Um, you're also going to get yourself in a position too. You can make a play on the ball. And both those guys are able to do that. Now it's just a matter of, getting them back out there again, um, getting better at the schemes that we've already installed in the spring, stuff they've worked on this summer. I know they've improved in those areas and then letting them go out there. And obviously that part of their game is huge uh, with the teams that we're going to face.